One home to Breakfast Club, Angie Martinez, and that hip hop and R&B at your main man, M. Easy, with another installment of the Sunday Sit Down, and I have a really special guest this after this evening, afternoon, whenever you watch it. Um, from NBC, correct? Yes. Darlene Rodriguez is in the building. Thank you for coming. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh no, listen. Um, I, I've heard, I, you you were talking about your daughter's basketball skills. I just had a son, so whatever. However you got her in, I'm going to need that advice. Leave some phone numbers. Let yes, me know. we're going to have to talk. Yes. Absolutely. And it will be the most fun, incredible experience as a parent watching them play sports. So now let me ask you. Uh -huh. See, this is the question. Are, what kind of... Are you the mom that gets mad if she falls? Or do you understand that it's all about in the sports? No, you know what? I have three kids. My son plays a lot of sports. So does my, my daughter. And um, I've learned as a parent, you step back. I let the coaches coach. I don't interfere. I'm not that crazy parent. I do cheer like a crazy person for them but Zach I step back Zachariah if you're watching this daddy's the crazy parent <laughs> I'm sorry I'm be on the court yelling and screaming and throwing I just can't help it I'm sorry uh, don't embarrass me no, I'm sorry it's too late me. listen uh, Darlene Rodriguez is in the building now um, from the BX yes so I mean you're Puerto Rican of course uh, all the Puerto how did Ricans you know <laughs> Lisa 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 fan club. Was, See, I, yo, listen, I know this already. I was president. <laughs> Darlene <laughs> Rodriguez, she's in the building, and I want to ask you, how do you get into journalism? What was that like? Especially for a female. I know there's a lot of, I uh, mean, stereotypes and, and a lot of hurdles for a female in that industry. What, what, what was it like for you? Absolutely. I mean, I think growing up in the Bronx, uh, being a young Puerto Rican girl from a, from a very poor background, getting into anything was going to be difficult. I wanted to do the job that I had since I was, that I have since I was eight years old. Mm. There's really never been anything else I wanted to do. I had that journalism bug. My mother watched a lot of news and I never changed course. And I had the kind of parent that said to me, well, that's what you want to do. Well, then that's what you're going to do. Good. And that encouragement and that uh, hurt never, ever allowing me to doubt myself. Mm -hmm. That's what did it, to be honest. Now, how did you practice? A lot of people ask me, when they, oh, how did you practice to get on the radio? What were, you, what were you, a lot of the things you did? I said, I read a lot out loud. Like, a lot of the things I did, I read out loud. So I made sure my voice was, was always on point or I could sound like I knew what I was talking about. So right. what was the practice of like being a journalism on TV every day? Well, the interesting thing was I didn't start in television. I started in radio. Ah, ah. you see? There's hope for me yet, Absolutely. TV. I'm coming. <laughs> we'll get you on TV yet. Um, radio was... A wonderful place to hone my journalism skills because as you know uh, better than everybody right you, you it's just you and the audience and it's your voice and it's very intimate and you can connect and as a journalist what I learned is broadcast journalists and radio all I had to do all I had to focus on was the story painting the pictures with my words how to describe things how to make people see and feel mm -hmm. with just my voice so by the time I got to television the visual part was a lot easier. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been on TV? Oh my gosh, I'm. I, I see. I'm gonna feel like I'm a hundred years old when I say that. Why? I'm, I'm gonna feel like I'm a hundred years old telling you. I started in radio as a reporter for CBS Radio in 1994. Nice. Yeah. Now, see, 94, the Gulf War had already ended. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. See, I'm now. I'm yes. letting my age go. Let me okay. stop. Uh oh. Let me stop. <laughs> um, what was the most what was your most memorable story in the early years? Not in okay. the past five. Give me like in the early years, something that you were like, wow, I'm really just a couple years out of radio and now I'm doing mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. at this point in my life. I could never imagine that. Give me one right. of those points. Well, TWA Flight 800, when that went down, okay, I right? that. we just, we just uh, acknowledged 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that was a big story to be involved in. That was a big story to, to watch and observe and, and see. A, a plane crash is in television news, especially in local news. It really is one of, if not the biggest story you can cover. Mm -hmm. So being a, a part of that and, and, and observing the human tragedy on such a, a huge scale, that was very memorable for mm. me. Very memorable. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's... See, that was a little heavy. <laughs> was a little heavy. Let's, let's, We're gonna go light. Let's light this up. Let's light this up. Um, since you're on TV, how often do people stop you? Like, is it hard for you to go grocery shopping? 
It's not like that. Thank you. But <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not quite there. Oh. Um, no, you know, it's it's a privilege and it's an honor. And people do stop and, and, and they say uh, that they admire your, your work. And, and people do stop you and say really nice things. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it all the time. The best compliment anyone ever paid me as a journalist doing what I do is a woman stopped me on the street near 30 Rock in Midtown where we uh, broadcast and said to me, I've been watching you and I trust you. And as a journalist, yeah. it's the biggest compliment somebody can pay you, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, seeing as you're on TV, what are some of your favorite TV shows? What do you watch? What is, what's on your favorites on your okay. DVR? I'll tell you right now, it's all about it's all about Game of Thrones. Woo! Come on now. Yes! What? It's okay, is John dead? We, are we, uh, we can't spoil, right? We'll spoil what? People, the know. books and the shows at the same point. I Tell know. me what you think. Listen, the, the, we just messed up the whole interview. You didn't, <laughs> she didn't say Game of Thrones. You know how it's Game of Thrones. Is John dead? What you think? He better not be. You don't think he's dead? He better not be. Daughter, come on over. Are you a Game of Thrones fan? Come on. <laughs> come, on come on, introduce yourself. Is that um, your name? I'm on the mic. Natalia. On the mic. Natalia. Go ahead. Natalia. Um, well, I don't really watch Game of Thrones, <laughs> but my brother does, oh, and he is, like, obsessed with it. That's he right. loves it. Like, we do. We what? watch it. Shout your brother out. Go ahead. David Portugues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my brother. Thank you. Dave, well, when I see you, we yes, want to talk to Game of Thrones, man. I know. Well, I don't think so. I think that Melisandre got there for a reason, yeah, right? We've seen what she can do in the past. We okay. don't necessarily like her. But Game of Thrones, Empire. Oh, okay. All right. All and right. Walking Dead. Those are oh, probably my three okay. favorites. I, I, I just no? can't get on Walking Dead. No. The zombie thing just... Nah. But it's not about the zombies. It's about the human experience. It's so good. I guess. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so now, is there anything besides journalism that you want to pursue after your journalism career is over, if there's something else mm -hmm. to pursue? I like writing. I've always liked writing. And there have been some ideas I've had for... for for stories, for a book, okay. and I think that's something I might like to pursue in the future. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as a journalist, that's you, you do. You write all the time. You write all day, and and this is what you do. You write. You tell stories. So I guess that's a natural. Darlene evolution. Rodriguez, bestseller on the way. <laughs> Would you buy my book? Uh, yeah. All right. Absolutely. You don't know what it's about yet, but you buy. Uh, no, listen, all right. Good. I support. Okay. <laughs> I'm all about that. I appreciate it. Now. We are, it is radio, so let me ask you. You grew up in the Bronx, mm -hmm. the home of hip hop. Don't stop it. Don't look over here. Um, give me your three classic albums, hip hop. Classic albums. Okay. I'm going to go, how about I go with songs? Okay, you give okay. me three songs. How about I go with Sucker MC, Run DMC? Wow, <laughs> okay. Back, we're going back, oh, yeah, right? Go we're going ahead, back. go ahead. Okay, how about Children's Story? Okay. Slick Rick. All right. Slick. Okay. I, she, she's got a little. You know okay. what? And she's from the Bronx. You know what? Is that okay? Go ahead. Uh huh. What else? <laughs> Last one. And gosh, children's story. Slick Rick. Run DMC. I guess. I gotta go with anything by Biggie. Is oh, that too recent? Go. Too recent? No, that's fine. All Listen, right. it can span as many genres and generations <laughs> as you want. It's cool. I'm anything. surprised you didn't hit me with a with a Lisa Lisa and a. And those well, guys. Well, yeah, I mean, that was freestyle. You're and right. don't get me wrong, right. I was into freestyle too. You're Puerto Rican, okay. you had to be Listen, at that time. It's what we did. <laughs> it's what we Ladies did. and gentlemen, it's Power 1051. It's the Sunday sit down. Darlene Rod Rodriguez of NBC is hanging out with me. And what what do you do on your free time? Your mom, your right. TV. Your, what's what's the free time of Darlene Rodriguez look like? Well, the free time I wish there was. If there is any, I know I wish there was more of it. But you know what? I have the same group of friends that I've had since high school, since middle school even, mm. and we get together all the time. So I feel like it's still we keep it young and fun and we'll go out we have dinner we'll we'll go dance we'll have a few drinks we get together at one of our different homes and and do what we've been doing for 20 years and and i feel like it keeps me grounded and home absolutely you need friends like that yeah absolutely yeah absolutely. they keep it real if i looked bad on tv the day before they will let me know absolutely mm -hmm. um now you're puerto rican um how <laughs> you, i feel like you do you, i feel like you like that do you is that okay i have a thing all right okay. listen my girls i, like, I used to have a thing with puerto rican girls i'm sorry hey listen um have you been back to puerto rico I, how often do you go back i go as often as possible i've try to take my family there at least every other year mm -hmm. to keep them involved in the culture 
and just the spirit of our people. Now, I'm not too um, well versed in what's going on, but I'm hearing mm -hmm. that they might be making Puerto Rico the, first, the 51st state right. or a commonwealth. Is this... Well, it's a commonwealth now, and it's a conversation that's been going on for a very long time. I mean, Puerto Rico has always been a colony of the United States, and the status of Puerto Rico is something that Puerto Ricans on the island have debated for many years, and it almost seems at different times that it's sort of split. You have some who want it to be a state and some who want it to remain commonwealth status. Mm -hmm. As it stands right now, there's a lot they can't do. If they did become a state, they'd be, by many accounts, the poorest state of all of the states in the union. So mm -hmm. it's a very complicated issue. I think they're going bankrupt, and that's what they need to worry about right now. In Puerto Rico. Right. Before okay. they worry about whether they're going to be a state or a commonwealth, <laughs> okay. they need to handle some economic and financial issues. But, you know, it's my home. It's my They're my people, and I, and I, I love it there. Love Got it. You. Were you at the parade this year? Of course. I, was I at the parade? I was an ambassador on a float. Oh, see, I'm not Don't Puerto Rican. Play. I was, I was I up here working <laughs> at the time. I'm sorry. I'm of up here. course. I was on the floor waving that flag. As you should. As, you better. Absolutely. Um, it was a pleasure. It was an absolute so pleasure. So nice hanging out with you. I've learned a lot of things. No, you know what? Before I let everyone else go, before I let you go, yeah. one last question. Give me one thing that you you learned when you got into journalism on TV that you that hit you in the face like I had no idea it was like this. One experience or one thing that happened to you that made you feel like, wow, mm -hmm. I had no idea this was this hot. I think when I started, um, when I first started, I, I didn't realize how unprepared I was for how some people would not welcome me mm. because there were some people who thought I didn't really have the right to be there in their midst. But at the same time, it was where I'm from and how I was raised that gave me that determination to say, you know what, it's okay. I may feel a little intimidated. I may not quite be on your level, but I have the right to be here just like you. Got you. And that's what took me through. Oh, man. That's a, I mean, that is absolutely the speech you want to give to your child or, or a young person because that's you're never, you should never feel out of place. That's right. Even if you are out of place. Right. And you know what? There are many times we will be out of place. There are many times where you're in the room and you may be the only person that's like you, that looks like you, that comes from where you come from, who has as little as you have in that room. But that's okay. You're still in the room. Yeah. Tell you're still in the room. Preach. There you go. <laughs> Darlene Rodriguez, Power 105 on the Sunday Sit That Way. I'm easy. Listen, it was a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Thank so you fun. so much. So Tell them how they can happen. how they can catch you on the TV, the oh, time slots, the listen. Twitters, the Instagrams. Let them know. Let them know. All right. Today in New York airs on WNBC Channel 4 right here in New York, the tri-state area. Website's NBCNewYork.com. Mm -hmm. My Twitter is Darlene4NY. We are on the air today in New York from 4.30 to 7 a.m. right before the Today Show. Oh, see, me and you, this the, the, the early time? morning crowd is... It's crazy. I, know, I, I also I also uh, board out for the Breakfast Club Monday through Friday, and I have to be here at four o'clock in the morning. We oh, so see, we're on the same So I understand we that. Get it. We get each other. Then. It's it's right. a thing. Yes, we're it's here. A thing. We Ladies and gentlemen, Darlene Rodriguez. Thank you again, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. the Sunday great. sit down with me.